everybody, today we're going to be looking at uh, the released gameplay footage for Far Cry 6. Um, I think it's a little weird the way they did this. On Ubisoft's official page, none of this stuff is there. There's just the, the gameplay trailer that they put, which I don't, I'm actually not even going to cover on this one. I might cover part of it. But um, this has been posted on IGN and GameStop and some other GameStop. What is it? GameSpot. Um, and some other. Uh, uh, sites or, or YouTube pages and stuff like that. So we're going to be looking at this uh, and I'm going to be offering my two cents and commentary. I will be pausing the video occasionally to talk about stuff, but uh, yeah, Far Cry is one of my favorite series. It's my sort of guilty pleasure series, not in that I think they're bad games, but in that I will typically just buy them at launch, which I almost never do. So um, yeah, I just kind of without question pick up the game. So without further ado, let's take a look at this trailer. With this little puppy, we see that they're kind of leaning into the goofier tone. Good boy. Very, very happy to see the return of machete kills. One of the things I really didn't like in Far Cry 5 was the stupid baseball bat kills. The shooting looks nice. And uh, I don't know if you guys see all this detail on the ground and stuff like that, all these little pebbles and bits of grass and and uh, some really great lighting effects and stuff like that. Um, I'll get into some worries I have about that in a bit, but I mean, it looks good right now, but that doesn't really mean anything. One thing that you'll notice in a second here is that sometimes the reticle or the iron sights are not on the target when the, the hits register, and I wonder if they put a little bullet tracking on the uh, player for the purposes of having this guy show off the demo, whoever's playing. Um, because I'll show, I'll show you right in a second, so firefight down the street. Let me just check the uh, quality here. No, it's... Okay, like that. Let's go back a second. Look at that. You can't even see the dude. That's not how iron sights work. All right, you put the target about on top of your iron sights or slightly occlude the target with your iron sights. This is occluded by the, the friggin' whole profile of the gun. And a bunch of shots and they're down. That makes no sense. And that happens a lot throughout the rest of the demo. So this is really cool right here. So she threw the grenade, threw another one here, it blew up around the car. And right over here what we're seeing is destructible environments and uh, that is believe it or not it's not a first for Far Cry um, this was actually a feature that was in Far Cry 2 most things were destructible you could cut down it was kind of like crisis you could cut down foliage with your machine gun um, trees and stuff like that you could blow up bushes you could blow up plastic uh, lawn chairs you could blow up uh, little fruit stands on the side of the road it wasn't a hundred percent destructible uh, because it came out in 2008 but it was really a technical powerhouse. I mean, that one had destructible environments, day-night cycle, dynamic weather system. Um, it had all these great features. You know, the fire propagation system, which has never been as good, and understandably so. I mean, in a more, uh, in, a, in an environment with higher uh, rainfall per year, you know, it's not as dry, and so fire's not gonna spread as quickly as it will with that dry, grassy sort of African savanna. But still, the fire propagation has never been as good. And uh, little by little, they've actually taken features out, you know, going into Far Cry 3, nothing's destructible anymore. You can't destroy plants or even chairs or anything. Everything seems almost cemented to the ground. Far Cry 4, it gets worse because they removed the dynamic weather system entirely, which I think would have been better for that game. Having like snowstorms and stuff like that come in would have been cool. Nope, it's just static weather all the time. You don't even get cloudy days or rain. Far Cry 5, yeah, Far Cry 5 did not have any weather whatsoever. Because at least 4 had, like, light snowfall in places, but 5 has nothing. There's no rain, no thunderstorms, no nothing. So, it's nice to see destructible environments come back. Because that's essentially what you saw in Far Cry 2. Later on in the demo, we'll see, like, it's pretty good, actually. Most things you can blow up. Um, but uh, I doubt that they'll have dynamic weather, because they seem to have just completely abandoned or issued that for whatever else, and I don't know why they've done that. It might be too difficult to program, but whatever. Anyways. Huh. Yeah. 
Is the horse's name Chorizo? I mean, it looks cool and cinematic, but this person is not fond of using iron sights. Look at that. Everywhere but the dude. I'd like to point out the level of detail on offer here. Like, look at all this foliage right here and all the, all the detail as we go around. All the grass. It's just incredibly detailed. And a lot of it's moving. Notice some frame rate issues here. Really massive frame rate issues. Um, and again, it's not me, it's the it's the gameplay demo they've released. Like, this is what Ubisoft released. I do love this healing animation, this is super cool. I don't think it fits the setting. Awesome machete kills back. God, I just I cannot tell you how much I missed them, and I absolutely hated the kills, the melee kills in Far Cry 5. I thought they were so dumb. And again, you know, that's the other thing. All the knives in the series have been based on the, the, you know, the, the location, right? Um, two, you had this sort of, uh, you know, bush machete that they would have in uh, Africa that a lot of people carry down there for hacking through, you know, sagebrush and all that, whatever kind of shit they've got out there. And then in three, you had a, another kind of machete that was a little bit different and it was definitely for like a more jungle environment. Four, you had the Kukri, and then five, you know, you're in the States, and baseball bat. And it's like, dude, give off, like, a big fuck-off Bowie knife with, like, cool decorations on it and stuff. You know, that would have been much cooler, but no, baseball bat. It was, and it, like, it lacked the, it lacked the punch. I realize how ironic it is to say that a, a, a blunt weapon lacked the punch, but it lacked the sort of figurative punch that stabbing someone does in these games. And maybe I need to see a, a you know, psychologist or a therapist or something, but I just think it's way cooler um, playing with uh, uh, edged weapons with the takedowns and stuff. And I'm so happy to see him return. I thought it was garbage that they took him out in five. They were in New Dawn, but I was like, well, this is not quite the same. Um, we'll see if they really bring him back for the numbered sequel. Look at all the detail on the on the floor here and the I think the water even reacted to the guy like dropping in it and look at all this these individual bits of grass and there's a lot of different types of foliage too I mean it really looks real but this is a good as time as any to bring it up um, Ubisoft is guilty of this every fucking time they showcase a video game they they show graphics that are just not representative of what they're gonna do of what they're gonna ship and I think the most egregious example in my lifetime, well, Rainbow Six Siege was pretty bad, and Watch Dogs was pretty bad, but uh, Far Cry 3, the build for Far Cry 3 that they showed off at E3 2012, I think it was, was gorgeous. And it, you know, it looks, the way it, the way it looks and feels, it does not look pre-rendered. It looks like that was a build they had of the game. And I know that the, the tech in the industry, the stuff that they're running in the offices, is way beyond what's typically done on the consoles. But still, when they re-released Far Cry 3 Classic, they should have released that build of the game. It had amazing looking water. It had foliage that's almost this good. So when I see stuff like this, you know, they did the same thing for Far Cry 4. They did the same thing for Far Cry 5. Those games didn't look anywhere near as good as their E3 counterparts. However, Far Cry 3 was the worst. Because parts of Far Cry 4 looked as good as the E3 demo. Parts of Far Cry... Far Cry 5 was the closest they ever got to, like, a one-to-one -one, um, representation of what the game's gonna look like. But Far Cry 3 was the worst, and I just don't trust Ubisoft anymore. They've done it with so many games. You know, they did it with Assassin's Creed Unity, they did it with um, Far Cry 4, Far Cry 5... Um, they did it with uh, Far Cry 3, obviously. They did it with Watch Dogs. Everyone hated them for that one. That one was a really big scandal. And then they did it with um, Rainbow Six Siege. That one was pretty bad, too. So they're very guilty of this all the time. The, we have the benefit now of having next-gen consoles, much better PC hardware, so hopefully they'll deliver on what they're showing here. The game looks amazing. Except for Cyberpunk 2077, this is the these are the best graphics I've ever seen in a game, especially considering it's open world. 
and I just hope that's what we get. But honestly, I've been burned so many times by Ubisoft, I would not be surprised if we don't get this, so. Love those knife kills. So what I'm talking about, this guy does not know where to put his iron sights to kill things. But things still die, I don't know how they're done. These EMP uh, charges, sticky bombs, are really cool. Better be careful. This kind of reminds me of something you'd see in maybe Deus Ex. Little, little immersive sim-esque. Now the first time I saw that, I didn't think the reticle was on the guy's head, but it might actually be. We'll see, we'll see at the next shot, because they do... Yeah, that was not on her head. I think that they're being very forgiving with the shots in this game. He missed. Dude, I love the inclusion of these, uh, you know, because it's like pseudo-Cuba, right? I love the inclusion of these 50s era cars like they have in Cuba. Because the vehicles in, in Far Cry were getting a little repetitive. One thing I don't understand is they're taking, like, look at this. First of all, the writing is super generic. You can, like, I, I feel like this scene could write itself based on every other game and movie we've seen about a similar kind of setting. These characters are just completely one note and boring, and Far Cry isn't actually known for that. It, the games are actually fairly interesting plot-wise. They're not, like, fantastic or anything, but, they, but this writing is so generic and boring um, already. And it's like, oh my god. But what's so weird is that they, they play it with such a serious, somber tone, and yet, as we will come to see, there's a lot of sort of goofiness, balls-to-the-wall action and fun in this game, so I don't know what's going on. A whole boat of our people shot to death. Get as far away as you can from that psychopath. All of you. <laughs> when tyranny is law, revolution is order. Quoting Bolivar won't save you. It's Pedro Abiso. Gonna save Yara with library cards? I have a list. So another thing I'm a little concerned about as a Far Cry fan is I'm a little concerned that uh, the entire arsenal is going to be these these uh, hobbled together, you know, patched together, jury rigged weapons. And I was wondering, here's here's their mo with Far Cry. Everything that they introduce in a in a any release, even the in between releases like New Dawn, every time they introduce something new things they include one of those things in the next game and carry it on through the rest of the series so like primal introduced companions or animal companions right so now you have those through the rest of the series um uh new dawn i was like what are they because i was like man please do not put in the quote-unquote rpg shit where it's like if someone's level 26 and you're level three and you shoot them in the head with a rocket launcher you know they lose like two points of health that is such bullshit. Like, you know, that kind of stuff might work in a fantasy game, but when it comes to stuff that we understand the, the the reality of, you know, we understand how these things operate in real life, it's just like, well, a noggin's a noggin, and an RPG's an RPG. Not a role-playing game, like a rocket-propelled grenade. And should the, should the two meet, um, uh, it's just, it's not, it's gonna, it's not gonna be pretty. Um, it's gonna blow up like a melon. So... I was, I was so, I don't think that they're including that shit in this game, but I also didn't really like the wacky jury rigged weapons. I, they worked for New Dawn and the Sawblade was, the Sawblade launcher was pretty cool. But if this is the entire arsenal for this game, I'm, I'm gonna be a little pissed. Because I don't want all these goofy like, oh, part of it's made out of a bicycle and oh, this is like a catalytic converter, it's so cool. It's like, yeah, alright, but I also want some normal weapons. I don't think that's the case, I think these are probably special weapons. And I'm guessing that the only RPG mechanics that they're going to put in are upgrading these and increasing damage or fire rate or whatever. Um, you have to find parts and, and tinker and stuff like that. Because you also had to do crafting and resource management. In, uh, like you had to find like bits of scrap and stuff like that to build your bases. So I think there's going to be a similar mechanic with upgrading these in this game. And some of them are just dumb too. Like I think there was a Mythbusters episode about nail guns. This is another reason I don't like these stupid weapons. Uh, yeah, nail guns can't kill you, and even if you increase massively the pressure that pushes them out of the barrel, um, there's a reason that uh, rifles have rifling. 
that barrels have rifling. The centripetal force that the uh, the that is caused by the uh, rotation of the bullet that is caused by the rifling keeps it on a straight trajectory. And if you don't do that, then it's just going to go everywhere. So it's not going to be very accurate, and it's not really going to work very well. And a lot of these, we'll, we'll get to another one that's really stupid. That's what I'm saying. Like this is putting a very silly tone into the game with all this stupid crap. But then they want the plot. We'll, we'll see. The, the plot is supposed to be very like taken very seriously. I'm not totally against it. I just, I think Far Cry needs a lick of realism about it. You know, it's okay to be a little wacky in places. It's okay to suspend your disbelief and have fun and like blow shit up. But it needs just that little bit of realism put into it to make it feel more like Far Cry. And this is kind of going, not completely over the top, but these weapons sure are. Although having a minigun is cool. Although, honestly, it feels like it's just a skin for the MG... I mean, it even has the same sound effect, largely, as the MG42 from Far Cry 4 and Far Cry 5. Which, oh, I'm so pissed that they nerfed for Far Cry 5, because if you play with that thing in 4, I mean, you can... You can take over the world single-handedly with that game. Like, not just Kirat, the entire world. That thing just fucking lays waste. Um, so, yeah, I'm worried that it's more of just like a skin, because it's like, hey, you could have just, just thrown an MG42. But miniguns are cool. Once again, that guy can't seem to aim. This weapon is really stupid. It's actually the, the most egregious complaint I have about these weapons. And you'll see why. Okay, so this is how the weapon works. It loads old school CDRs, right? And plays the music from them, which would give away your position. And then we are led to believe that when it launches those CDRs, you're killing people with them. It's just ridiculous and stupid. And the other thing I, the reason I think this is the most egregious is not that I can't suspend my disbelief and be like, oh, that's fun. Here's what, I, when I first saw this uh, trailer, I chuckled. I was like, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Especially when the music skips while uh, the player is shooting. But then I realized, other than that, this weapon is really dumb. It's not going to be that fun to use, other than to just have that chuckle moment. And it's a one-off. Once you use it once and you hear the music skip, you hear Macarena skip, you're going to be like, oh, that was funny. And then you're never going to use it again because it doesn't seem practical. And it's dumb. And so that's why it's the most egregious because it was literally just put in there probably for E3. Just so people are like, did you see the CD gun? Oh my god. Like, I, I think it's not going to have a ton of practical applications. Because unlike the saw blade launcher, which bounces off of walls and has some tracking. Um, and it's like, yeah, I can suspend my disbelief because it's fun. This is fun for like a single laugh. So that's what I'm talking about. The wacky tone mixed with like the super serious subject matter of the plot is a little stupid. There is a lot of detail in these environments, but uh, just take it with a grain of salt, people. All right, so I really like this. I'm gonna show you why. All right, so normally in games, flamethrowers suck. They, their range of the, the flame it shoots out, it's not even like a flamethrower. It's more of just like a nozzle, like a directed nozzle, you know, like a torch. Um, what do they call those? Those propane, I think they're called propane nozzles or propane torches. Well, it'll shoot a flame out like, so in most games, it's like, I don't know, maximum, like 10, 12 feet. If you see footage from like the Pacific Theater in World War II or D-Day, I mean, you know that these things, they got like, I don't know, 25, 35 feet, maybe further. I mean, they really shoot fucking flames out there. And this is the first time in a video game I've seen where a flamethrower doesn't just go like 5, 10 feet in front of the player. Um, and I think, um, yeah. And uh, they, they put this view in. You can tell that this isn't like a cinematic or anything. This is, if you watch the player, the animation of the player himself is very stiff, but the arms are moving to simulate recoil. That's because there's two cameras. There's one that's in the first person view of the player. And then there's one that's above to just show how far the, the flame is going out. So, um, yeah, because I was a little worried that was just like a cutscene or something, but no, that's they're just trying to showcase like, hey, this is how far, and I love that. It's so cool. And if you are going to have wacky weapons, I think this one's really fun. Um, and it, you know, you can suspend your disbelief. I mean, honestly, if you did this to a helicopter, you might be able to down it. I don't think you could take out the rotor, but uh, 
Yeah, you might be able to down it. That's just cool as hell. I also love this Art Deco tower. Uh-oh. This Art Deco tower right here. Love this. Um, I really like the... Because, again, it's like... It's like... Uh, it's like pseudo cuba um and this city looks huge i mean there's never been an urban environment this big in any far cry game this is really cool so it's going to be kind of fun to see how the gameplay changes up in an urban environment but then they didn't get rid of it the, there's obviously tons of wilderness too so you know i think they pushed the envelope because i i've said for years like oh well if they do a far cry game they should uh um if they want to do like a, a really different setting that they've never done before you know, we've been to every biome. Let's do an urban one. And I'm really glad that they did a little mix of both. They weren't just like, oh, we're going to set it in New York. You know, like Manhattan or something, you know? Uh, or like Beijing. No, they're like, we're going to set it in a place that has big cities for you to have some urban combat. But there's also going to be a wilderness. Because that's kind of, that's the Far Cry experience. Yeah, I love that gun. I think the backpacks look stupid. But from a gameplay perspective, I think that they... Uh, are going to offer another kind of level of depth to what you can do in combat. Because typically you just have guns and then like your backup grenades. But now you can do stuff like this. You've got area of effect attacks like this. I thought it was a jetpack at first, but no. It just shoots like... It's just area of effect for fire. And then you've got this too. Which is like a... Kind of like a mortar. And I really don't like, we'll go back here, I really don't, okay, give it a second, I really don't like the idea of third person stuff in my Far Cry games, and I am a little bit worried. One of the things I've always liked about the Far Cry series in the, in the sort of, you know, Ubisoft kingdom is that everything is becoming an Ubisoft game. But basically, the way I saw it was everything was trying to be like Far Cry. Everything they make was trying to be like Far Cry. So Far Cry was still doing its own thing. And it was still doing a, a, quite a few di things differently than a lot of the other Ubisoft games. But now we're starting to see Far Cry maybe drift into wanting to be more like Assassin's Creed or all the other Watch Dogs, all the other Ubisoft crap that they make. And I don't really like that. I like that Far Cry still kind of retained its identity. One of those things was like a fixed first person perspective that never takes you out of the experience. There's no cutscenes where you see your character or anything like that, you know, uh, adds to immersion, adds to sort of storytelling, and it adds to what makes Far Cry unique. Already we're starting to see, okay, we got this third person camera now whenever you use your backpack. From a gameplay perspective, I understand because you need feedback to be like, okay, did I, did I actually shoot the rockets? Could have just been background firefight noise. It's nice to see and be like, okay, I did shoot the rockets, but it's... I think it sets a dangerous precedent and there's some footage later that shows a lot of third person camera and I'm just like please don't turn Far Cry into some shitty third person shooter please and I'm a little afraid that they're going to do that because everything else Ubisoft makes seems to be third person shooters and I think there might be some pressure from Ubisoft on the on the Far Cry team to uh, to make this third person shooter which I would be really really pissed at I would be done with this series at that point um I do not want it turning into some, you know, hide behind this wall here, take cover, cover based fucking third person shooter bullshit. Uh, that's not Far Cry, so. But like I said, see, it, op it offers some flexibility in combat. They said something earlier about being a one person army. Um, the return of pets. And an alligator is a good choice. Or is it crocodile? Like, look at all the, the leaves and they have like... I don't know if they're on a physics simulation or if they're individual animations, but... They don't, you know... It's amazing looking. Like I said, we'll see what they actually ship, but...
One thing that, so in the in all the previous Far Cry games, except for five, there's always some ancient structures that you can explore. You know, in two, you had all those uh, mud built dwellings that kind of look like, uh, not Montezuma Cas Castle, uh, Mesa Verde. Um, but are, are, you know, similar to the stuff you find down in, like, Ethiopia, those those mud-built structures that, and uh, a lot of them are still traditionally, or Marrakesh. Um, and, uh, you know, in Far Cry 3, you had all of the, uh, like, Cambodian style, uh, and, and, like, Japanese, like, ancient Japanese architecture. There's a lot of different, um, you know, Southeast Asian cultural, you know, ancient stone temples and stuff like that. In Far Cry 4... You had all those sort of um, Hindu-based temples and all that kind of stuff. So I like all of that sort of like sort of Indiana Jones-esque adventure, like exploring ruined stuff that they added in. And I haven't seen anything yet, but it would be a real missed opportunity if they didn't have any Aztec or Mayan stuff here. Because we do know, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that the Mayans did, or one of the Mesoamerican cultures did make it through the Caribbean. So, um, and, and set up on different Caribbean islands, like interesting monuments and stuff like that. So if we don't see some sort of ruins like that, I think the setting would be sort of a missed opportunity for them to put something like that in. Or ancient pirate shit, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, ancient pirate shit like they did in, um, Uncharted 4, you know, there's a, you know, or, uh, uh, what was it? Right, or no, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you know, had, had pirate stuff too. So, I mean, I, I'm not gonna not give Ubisoft credit and uh, the Far Cry team. They usually put cool stuff like that, but I'm just a little concerned. Nice machete kill. Another point of order here. Um, so I love how lovingly and, and accurately detailed all the weapon modeling is down to like individual rivets and like where the serial number would be how the damn thing is supposed to be reloaded and little subtleties to the animation that make it make sense. But one thing I just cannot understand in friggin' video games is that they overlook something so simple as this. If you, you see these things on the back of the uh, cartridge here, the, the sort of copper looking thing, that's called a primer. And if the primer is struck, the round has been fired. And you have seen this since the dawn of fucking video games. Because here's what happens. They order a piece of demilitarized ammunition, which typically comes with a struck primer. And then what they do is they just take a bullet, reseed it in the casing, um, and it doesn't have any powder and it doesn't have a primer. And they just give it to you like that. So it's got a struck primer. So all these companies have been making video games and they're just like, oh, what does a 308 round look? Well, order one. They order one. It, it's totally inert. And they're just like, oh, I guess they've got this weird dimple in the back. I wonder what that's for. And it's like, that means the round has been used. Like, it's spent. So it's really stupid, and it's like, it's actually stupider, stupider, because it's fucking more time to animate this. Not that much more time, because they just repeat it, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, I just don't understand how they could get every other part of this weapon correct, and all the subtleties of reloading and everything like that, and not understand, like, this is what spent ammunition looks like, but pet peeve of mine. Sorry, we'll move on. I'll show you some of the subtleties of animation here in a second why I get so annoyed with this kind of shit. See, all these animations are great. Watch this. All right, so you drop the grenades out. Also, another stupid thing I noticed. There's rifling inside of here, which I don't think there would be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there wouldn't be rifling inside of here. Anyways, that's easily overlooked. Okay, so puts the grenades in. Oh, wait, we're going to go back. Because I don't know how this weapon went. Takes the grenades out, and then he twists something. I wouldn't think you'd have to twist anything to, like, lock it back down or whatever. He did that weird little twist before he started putting grenades in. I would have assumed you could have just dropped them. So they had that attention to detail. To know that, oh, you've got to flick this little thing before you can, you know, put the grenades back in. But then they make... Look at these grenades. These have tapped primers, too. I don't know why they keep making that mistake. It's not that big of a deal, it just annoys me because of all the other detail that's in the weapons. <laughs> really great texture on the ground, on the ground, textures on the ground here. Uh, all the different, like, different chunkiness of the mud and little puddles and different sheen based on how wet it is. And just a lot of detail.
We'll have all this like 50s, early 60s modernist architecture mixed with Art Deco. Kind of looks like uh, South Beach. See what I'm talking with the serious subject matter here? This guy being tortured, him lecturing his son or ward or whatever on how to be a ruthless piece of shit. You know. And yet you have wacky guns that shoot can, uh, CD-ROMs at people. Look at all this, the, the reflective water stuff here. Again, guys, take this with a grain of salt because Ubisoft has never, as far as I know, never shipped a product that looked like it did at E3. But if they do this time, this will be amazing. I'm a little worried if I can run it now, honestly. Even though I just, because I didn't get a can 3080. See, again, super serious subject matter. Everyone's super somber and gritty. Joyless performances from everyone. Looking good. So yeah, guys, that was the Far Cry 6 uh, gameplay. We're going to see some stuff in here. I'm going to talk just a little bit about stuff in the beginning here. I'm going to turn this volume down a bit. But yeah, so... That was a Far Cry 6 gameplay demo. I, you know, like I said, I have some misgivings, but overall, I think it's a step in the right direction. I'm way more excited for this than I was Far Cry 5. Um, to make a long story short, I feel like Far Cry 5 was repeating the same kind of setting and biome as, uh, like, okay, Far Cry 4, Alpine Mountainous Environment. Okay, brand new, awesome. Far Cry Primal, Alpine Mountainous Environment. All right, well, it was based off of the map for Far Cry 4, and it's set in Europe, so, okay. Far Cry 5, Alpine Mountainous Environment in Montana, and a huge missed opportunity to have it set in, uh, to have it set in uh, Arizona. And my elevator pitch for why it should have been set in Arizona, not just because I, I live there and I, I love it, um, wingsuiting through the Grand Canyon. Th th I feel like that's all I need to say about that. Plus, we have so much biodiversity here. We have the low desert of the Sonora Desert, you know, with, uh, we've got prickly pears and ocotillo and saguaros and stuff like that, and, and dirt and sand, and then we've got the sky islands, and then we have the huge mesas and, like, the white mountains and stuff, if you want your alpine mountains. We've got red rock uh, high desert, like Sedona. We've got the Grand Canyon. I mean, it's just, there's, we even have sand dunes like Yuma, so I think it would have really made a lot more sense to show off a lot of stuff. And it could have been an amalgam of stuff in the, we have the Painted Desert here too, Crater Lake, um, Monument Valley, like all of those things would have made great set pieces in Far Cry 5 and it would have made the map seem so much more diverse and interesting. But all, pretty much most of the map in Far Cry 5 looks extremely samey and it's largely Alpine mountainous environments again. And then we get to Far Cry New Dawn, which is just a reskin of Far Cry 5's map, and it's Alpine Mountainous Environments again. So that's four games in a row over the course of, what, 14 to 19? So five years, and then we had to wait another uh, two years for the sequel. Um, so I was just getting so tired of being in the mountains for Far Cry. And because uh, I had never thought of Far Cry as like, oh, we're just in the mountains. And I was really afraid they were going to set the next one in Russia or Alaska or some shit like that or Europe. So, you know, I was really happy about this setting. Um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the game way more than Far Cry 5. I thought the whole premise to the plot to Far Cry 5 was stupid as well. Like, how did the National Card not get called immediately when this religious cult takes over an entire, it's not just like one town, like it's an entire region. It's its almost like an entire state. I mean, that, it's just stupid, it makes no sense. The ending I thought was a little silly. Um, I mean, the plot wasn't bad and the gameplay is solid. And I've also been to a lot of those places too, like Wyoming, Montana, Yellowstone. So it was kind of cool to see the representations of those in the game, but I was already getting just tired of that general biome and I felt like there were way more interesting places in the US you could have picked. The other cool thing about Arizona is you could have put in like a little bit of Mexico down in it too. Have some Sea of Cortez with some ocean stuff. They've got really beautiful water down there. All sorts of crazy stuff. The Oregon Pipe uh, Forest is down there. Like just a lot of diversity that you could have added with Arizona. Um, and I think you could have made a plot with, you know, drug runners or coyotes or something like that too that made a lot more sense 
you know, maybe you're you're sent in as a federal agent to support the border patrol and then maybe you find out about some corruption and you know, maybe they've locked down an entire section of the border to easily move drugs across because the coyotes are paying off the border patrol and so you have to fight them all and they're not reporting to the feds or the national guard, you know, that this entire area has been taken over by the coyotes because they're on the take. You know, you could do it in a sort of neutral way, too, without making a statement one way or the other. Because it's just like, we know drugs come through the U.S. border. We know that the Border Patrol exists, and we know that coyotes exist. So, it doesn't have to be any sort of statement about border security, either. It could just be like, alright, this happens in this setting, let's do it. Um, you know, so, I, I thought it was a huge missed opportunity. I thought the, Mon the Montana setting was so boring. There are some cool things you can do in it, though. Um, so yeah, I am excited for Far Cry 6. I'm going to fast forward here a, a little bit so we can see something. Okay, the urban environments look great. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see, there's a lot of third-person shots here. That's kind of giving me pause. Like this. She's walking through villages, walking through towns. Is the third-person camera an option? I mean, I know some people might say like, oh, more options, the better, but I I don't think so. I really don't want my my third person, any third person in my Far Cry games. Uh, it seems that there's two playable characters too. There was that dude in one of the cutscenes that was holding the FAL. He's a playable character, and then she is too. Denny Rojas, I think her name is. Um, and uh, I was going to say it seems like sort of a... a inclusivity move but honestly you, there's been playable female characters since Far Cry 2 and there's two playable characters now um, and I think what they're probably going to do is split the campaign up either there's going to be two campaigns um, or it's going to be kind of like Halo 2 where it's like you play a few missions as Danny and then a few missions as the other guy I think his name's Javier and um, that's how it's going to be I don't have any problem with that the only problem I have is that you see their faces all the time in cutscenes I mean that's that's a first for Far Cry. Even in Far Cry 5, like you build your character, but you're never you don't have this like wacky dude in every cutscene. So, like I said, you know, Far Cry has a flavor. Um, it's it, it's a very it tries to be a very immersive experience. Um, Far Cry 2 is an immersive sim. Uh, you know, it it is always gone for that, and it's always had a lick of realism about it too, which kind of like. You know, it's like, oh, I'm having this fun adventure, but, like, I could sort of believe some of this happening. It's just a more exaggerated expression of what could possibly already happen. With the inclusion of these wacky weapons and constantly being, you know, thrust into a third-person camera. And possibly even the option to do certain segments of the game in third-person. Kind of getting a little wor worried about the identity of the franchise. Um, but I think it's largely just me worrying too much. Um... Again, I think it looks like way more fun than Far Cry 5. Way more stuff. You get the urban stuff. There's almost certainly going to be interesting vehicles returning. Probably things like seaplanes. I'd love to see the gyrocopter make a return. I think it makes more sense in this setting than the large helicopters. Because there's not going to be a lot of place to land with all the dense jungle. Um, so the gyrocopter is my favorite gun in all of the Far Cry series. If they don't put the M79 in, I'm going to be pissed. But it's never been quite the same since Far Cry 4. And honestly, it's completely broken in that game in the best possible way. I love that gun. But uh, I like what I'm seeing. Um, I'd love them to bring back something like riding, like riding elephants. That was really cool. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell Far Cry 4 is my favorite. Might be my favorite in the series. 2 is really good too. But I don't know. There's got to be something, some large animal on these islands that you can ride. Uh, having horses in the game, that's a first for Far Cry, so that'll be pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited, and I think it looks great, and the, my only concern now is, uh, can I run it? Um, as far as I remember, Ubisoft's pretty good about uh, getting stuff to run. Um, I haven't tried Far Cry 5 on my machine yet, but Far Cry 4 runs like a dream, but of course it would. Um, I'm just, you know, have no idea, so we'll see. We'll see when it comes out. But yeah, you guys, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, these are my impressions of the gameplay we've seen so far. I am generally optimistic. Um, I think the story could be... It could, there's a large possibility and likelihood that the story will be bleh. And I, I love Giancarlo Esposito. Um, but he doesn't seem so far to be as compelling as a villain as some of the other people in the other games. Um, but I'm sure he'll do okay. 
And uh, I'm a little worried about the general identity of the franchise, but other than, you know, when I'm talking about like, oh, I don't like the wacky weapons. It's not that I don't like them. I just, I would prefer if there's a traditional arsenal in addition to those. Um, but it looks fun. It looks like there's going to be a ton of weapons and tools to play with. Uh, you've got the little dog. I don't know what he's going to do. He could probably act as like a distraction so you can go up and stealth kill people. Um... You know, you've got uh, the horse. I don't know what. Maybe the horse can trample people for you. Get the alligator. Um, there'll probably be some some other comrades you can bring in, like Far Cry Five, like sniper, you know, people and whatever to help you out. Um, so, and then the the backpacks with the different abilities. There's going to be a ton of flexibility in how you want to play the game. And I love that there's an urban environment now without betraying the sort of. Uh, exotic feel that Far Cry is supposed to have and without betraying the wilderness aspect that everyone wants and I gotta say too uh, these environments look at this this is amazing look at the level of geometrical detail on some of these um, geological features and stuff like that the fact that you can see individual trees all the way out like here in the horizon um, so much detail to the environment. I hope, once again, I hope it ships like this because Ghost Recon Wildlands had some pretty impressive E3 footage and it looked like garbage. Not garbage, but it didn't look anything like that on release. But I'm really hoping we've now reached the, the technological precipice uh, or summit where we can finally start having Ubisoft, Ubisoft ship what they've shown off at E3. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is amazingly impressive. Um, and like I said too, like they wanted to do the whole urban thing, but they didn't make the whole game urban. This looks like a lot of wilderness and jungle to explore, so I'm very excited for this game. Um, and like I said, you know, Far Cry pretty much, I don't do the in-between sequels. Uh, I used to rent them, and now it's harder to rent, so I just wait for them to, maybe a buddy of mine gets it, lets me borrow it, or whatever. Um, or it goes on super sale, that's how I play those. I played New Dawn once, it was awful in my opinion. And, uh, but I, every numbered sequel of Far Cry, I pretty much buy at launch. Ever since 3, I think, yeah. I just buy it at launch. And I haven't been disappointed so far. I mean, it's, for all my gripes of Far Cry 5, and I thought the setting was a mistake. Like I said, the setting isn't terrible. It's just, it was a missed opportunity. And that was a great game. 4 was, like, one of my favorite games of all time. So was 2. 3 is also, you know. So they have a really good track record with the numbered sequels. And the in-between stuff isn't bad either. I have a couple of buddies who really like, they got me into Far Cry and they're obsessed with Primal. I started replaying it a little bit to just kind of see. Um, loved Blood Dragon, obviously that's a kind of a masterpiece in gaming. Um, and uh, I feel like I'm missing one. I'm missing one of the in-between sequels. It was three, then Blood Dragon, four, then Primal. No, okay, yeah, so New Dawn was stupid. New Dawn obviously should, and I think honestly Primal 2 should have been the Dinosaur Island Jurassic Park thing that they've been teasing us with for a while. Anyways, that's all I have to say about Far Cry 6. Those are my thoughts and impressions on uh, the gameplay showed off so far. Uh, I didn't go through the rest of the video because I honestly didn't think any of the stuff they showed off here was very good. And it was really disjointed, even more so than the last one. So, um, uh, yeah, so let, you, let me guys know what you thought about the game in the comments, and uh, thanks for watching.